The truckers' revolt in Canada is not just a powerful response to the cruel, destructive madness of corona law. It is the signal of a historic political realignment, the kind that happens only once or twice a century. It started with Trump, who refocused the Republican Party on the working class and made it very clear whose interests he was for. Pro worker, pro worker, pro worker, a pro worker. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. Trump delivered on that with pro worker policies, pro worker tax cuts, pro worker regulatory reform, pro worker trade deals, pro worker initiatives on skills and training. All of this produced the best results for American workers in at least half a century. And it completely wrong footed the Democrats, who for decades thought they were the Workers' Party. But as the elitist, woke activist class took over the Democratic Party, they adopted an anti-worker policy agenda, destroying energy jobs with extremist climate zealotry, destroying blue-collar earnings with uncontrolled low-wage migration, destroying workers' living standards with runaway inflation. They still tried to claim they were for the workers. Working class and middle class people protecting working families. Every senator from every state has witnessed the hollowing out of the middle class over the past few decades. But now, with their response to the truckers' revolt, the mask is off. Democrats and their stooges in the media have stopped pretending. They hate workers. They really do think that workers are the deplorables. Racists, conspiracy theorists, basically just scum. Watch. It's not just truckers, there's a lot of, I, I've, I've heard there's QAnon supporters in the crowd. This is much more complicated than just a small group of people who are frustrated about vaccine mandates. Not when you're waving Nazi flags and Confederate flags and having far right extremists marching in the streets and threatening local residents. It's a cult. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Democrats and their media servants want to crush the workers. First, they set the stage by making them seem dangerous. Here's the Washington Post. The movement shares an affinity with Trumpist, toxic, authoritarianist, is that a word? Politics. And this from Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Well, it's dangerous. They're inciting and encouraging people to break the law and to do so in a way that devastates so many hardworking people. And then they just come straight out and say it. The workers must be crushed. This was from a CNN analyst. Slash the tires, empty gas tanks, arrest the drivers, move the trucks. Remember, these snooty elitists waging their class war from above, who look down their noses at blue-collar workers, the only reason they're able to lounge around in their Lululemon yoga pants working from home the last two years was because blue-collar workers kept their power on and got their oat milk and weed and vegan sausages delivered. But perhaps even worse than the condescension and racist smears was the way they tried to delegitimize a worker's protest as their favorite new insult, an insurrection. Where the police chief says COVID protests are a, quote, nationwide insurrection driven by madness. Just think of the language. I know it sounds familiar to you, right? A threat to democracy, uh, an insurrection, sedition. Some of the organizers of this protest, which, as I mentioned, started more than a week ago, they do want to overthrow the government. You have an insurrection underway in the capital of a very important country. When you try to crush dissent by falsely branding a political protest as an insurrection, that is the definition of authoritarianism, of fascism. Do the Democrats and CNN and MSNBC and all the rest even realize how reckless and anti-American their rhetoric is? We have to stand up to these bully boy tactics. They're not calling the truckers insurrectionists because they actually think they want to overthrow the government with violent means. They're doing it because they can't stand any challenge to their ideology. They're we know best centralizing technocratic zealotry. They are trying to intimidate people from challenging them and we must not allow it to succeed. A key part of that is staying on the high ground ourselves. That's why it was so self-defeating and ridiculous for the RNC the other week to describe the Capitol riot as legitimate political discourse. No, it was a riot, and a riot is not legitimate political discourse. Not when Antifa does it, not when BLM does it, and no, not when Trump supporters do it either. The Republican Party has a massive opportunity right now. Do not screw it up. 
as we saw in the 2020 election, thanks to Trump, the GOP is becoming a multiracial working class coalition. That is something we've long argued for here. It will give Republicans a political advantage for a generation. There are more working Americans than there are work from home elitists. I know whose side we're on. We always have been. We say it at the top of the show every Sunday. We are proudly pro-worker and proudly pro-America. Let's make sure we pursue those aims positively and on the basis of clear and consistent principle. Make sure you share this important message when we post it. We're at Steve Hilton X and at Next Rev FNC. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.